Welcome to Higher View. We are so excited to be here. Today is going to be a very cool topic, super deep topic. Hold on to your hats. <laughs> um, we have Dr. Storm with us today, and we've got some really cool stuff I'm really excited to talk about. And I'm not going to get into it too much because we have Amy on the show. I know she's a new face, kind of, at least to the show. And um, But she knows her personally. And I wanted to hand it over to her, let her do her personal introduction, um, and let you know about how amazing she is. I know you guys are going to figure it out really quick anyway, but <laughs> stuff to share. So Amy, why don't you introduce her? Okay. Hi, ladies. Um, I am so excited today to introduce Angel to everyone. And beside all of her uh, professional credentials, she's a life coach, she's a health coach, she's an author, and so much more. Um, she is someone that I know personally, and I met about three years ago at a prayer and worship gathering. And the first memory I have of Angel is she was laid prostrate on the floor in the very front of the church in communion with mm -hmm. the Lord and worshiping her king. And that is who Angel is. She is someone who has developed an intimacy with the Holy Spirit um, that is inspiring to me. And um, I am so so glad to have her in my life. She's been such a great friend. She will give the shirt off her back to see people walk and step into their healing and freedom. Wow. And so she has so much I know to share. And I'm so glad that she's on the higher view because I know every single woman that is listening today will glean, um, maybe feel encouraged, um, and excited to really step into their purpose on this earth. So welcome, Angel. I'm so glad you're here today. Aww. Amy, thank you so much for that generous introduction. Um, yeah, Amy is, is an amazing person. I am so grateful to know her as well. Thank you guys so much for having me on the show. Um, so I'm really excited to be here. Do you guys want me to just kind of jump into what I feel like is on my heart? Or do you want to start off with, with something first? No, let's jump. Let's we jump. Just gotta go. We always we just want to go with Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, <laughs> say something, laying something on your heart, girl. Let's go for it. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. So, um, just a quick introduction about myself too. So I am a life coach. I have a ministry, uh, and specifically, I help people who are recovering from narcissistic abuse or who are recognizing that they're in a narcissistic relationship mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, try to get out of that situation, regain their identity, reconnect to their purpose, and help them just navigate the recovery process. Uh, it looks different for everybody, but uh, ultimately, everybody needs two things to reconnect to their true identity and to find their purpose again, to be reconnected to the reason why they were created. And that's kind of what I do. Um, and uh, there is, there is, two things that I really want to talk about. First of all, yes, narcissism, we are seeing so much uh, awareness of this now. I've been doing this for almost three years and there's a lot more, um, uh, I will say, regular ministers who are being more aware of this, pastors, uh, teachers, uh, Sunday school teachers and churches who are being uh, awakened to the fact that this is a serious issue that is going on in mm -hmm. in our church communities in our in our uh, in the body of Christ and uh, we know that the the word says that the cleansing will first start there and mm -hmm. I think that this awakening is part of that so um, and and even this week on Friday I'm having a, a friend of mine his name is Justin Akers he's a pastor in Louisiana he's coming on my on my YouTube channel to discuss this from a mm -hmm. pastor's perspective because this is something that is really again uh, so on the heart of the Lord it's it's becoming uh, pushed to the the kind of front line of, of ministry workers so the ministers the pastors the people who are touching the body of Christ every day they're really becoming awakened and, and alert to uh, this issue so uh, so that's so encouraging to me because uh, you know, what business does light have to do with dark? And we need to uh, make sure that our whole body, right, is filled up with the light. And so um, and so that's very encouraging to me. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about here is the importance of connection. 
um, one of the things that narcissism will do is to seek to isolate you. And I have a whole bunch of teachings on the origin of narcissism and things like that on my YouTube. So I don't want to go too deep into that. But when, when we first see Eve being tempted by the snake, right, the devil and the snake in the garden, uh, mm -hmm. she was isolated. She was by herself. And one of the things that is uh, very um, uh, kind of a red flag that you're dealing with a narcissist is that you're finding your support structure just slowly dwindling away. So your family, your friends, you're just becoming more and more isolated and completely dependent upon the narcissist. And again, this can come in all shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. This can be a, a work relationship, a friend, even uh, even a spiritual mentor uh, can fill this role. So uh, mm -hmm. that's one of the red flags. And in this season, specifically beginning next month, I really feel uh, the Lord pressing upon my heart the importance of connection mm -hmm. and not um, not kind of like, just a ethereal thought of, you know, I know we need to be connected and I know that we need to be, uh, you know, I need to watch the the church online these days, or I know I need to, you know, go to church if, if it's open, you know, and that kind of thing. But I'm talking about true deep connection. Mm -hmm. And that, that needs to be something that we build uh, strategically, uh, purposefully, not mm -hmm. not just kind of expecting it to just happen because I show up once a once a week or once a month or whatever, you know, uh, your situation for for your region is, but something that's done intentionally. And again, not just for the body as a whole, but for your family showing up, being present for your family, uh, who should be your first ministry, your friendships, mm -hmm. being intentional about building those connections. And um, and building your relationship with God, obviously, your own personal relationship, not expecting other people to feed you to uh, uh, to help support that relationship, you know, uh, really learning how to mature in that your own self and uh, your your businesses, your career, all that all all of the things in your life need to be built purposefully, especially for this season that we're about to enter into the rest of the year. Uh, pretty much from September onward, I, I feel this is such an important thing because the harvest is coming in. We know that this is going to be a season we are going to see so many people just coming to the Lord. And if we don't have room, meaning we didn't purposefully build a place, a structure, a, a network that they can come in and be discipled in and they can truly learn what it's like to be a member of the body, then we uh, we we are missing the point and we're doing we're not doing the work of kingdom, you know, kingdom, right. everything kingdom is with excellence. And yeah. so this is something I have been talking for a long time. I want to I want to take a break. But um, but this is something that's really on my heart right now. So um, so I don't know if that resonates with y'all. Yeah, no, you're you're that's so, so um, you're really speaking mm -hmm. a very similar language. We've been. Um, really talking about being in one accord, you know, and that the deep unity um, that they talk about in in Acts, and that call to be in one accord, you know, one mind, one heart, and and that's that deep connection, that place of deep connection that you're talking about. So I'm like, oh yeah, that's totally going with you know what what Papa's been putting um, on our heart to to operate in. So that is so good. Um, uh, many years ago, I'm like, I was actually sitting here thinking, well, how long, how, how long ago has that been? Um, so aging myself, but almost 30 years ago, um, I was, I was in a marriage and the, um, uh, doctor that we were going to for counseling, um, back then had talked about, um, him being a possible, what he had said at the time, um, borderline personality disorder. And it was so funny because I was so, it was very young, very naive. And and I thought that that meant, well, he was just on the border of having a personality disorder. And, um, and it's funny because now, and you never heard, you know, anything about narcissism, you know, back then, 30 years ago. And as I've learned more, and it is becoming more predominant and more spoke about and, you know, um, more addressed, I'm like, actually, 
I don't know that that was a borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there was a lot of things that we didn't have language for. So they just kind of throw somebody in a pot. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's amazing to me really how prevalent um, narcissism is, but they just didn't really have the right language for it. And I think there's a lot of people, even though it's coming out on the forefront, people think that they understand what narcissism is or narcissistic disorder. Um, but again, they're, they're just lumping things in. It's like, I've been doing teachings on Judas and we just flop this betrayal label on him. And instead of doing the word studies of really what that betrayal word um, meant and entailed and you know what was all behind that so can you kind of break down mm -hmm. for our listeners narcissism and a narcissistic disorder and and what that looks mm -hmm. like and what the person's struggling with or what on the other side you're experiencing when you're in a relationship with somebody that's dealing with narcissism and you know kind of kind of give us some language for that so people are following the rest of the the trail Yes, absolutely. So um, narcissistic personality disorder is part of a cluster B personality disorder group that uh, that the DSM manual five has for personality disorders and mental health illnesses. Uh, uh, and by the way, borderline it is part of that cluster B. Uh, so is uh, what we used to call sociopath or or now we call it antisocial personality disorder. Uh, psychopathology is also part of that. So uh, what that means is that it can come. It, it's usually mixed. It's a cluster. That's why they call it cluster mm -hmm. personality disorders, meaning I might be uh, bipolar is another one that's part of that. So I might be bipolar but I have tendencies of narcissism in there because I cluster these uh, attributes mm -hmm. together. And so, but, uh, so th that being said, like, I just want you to understand the, the, the clinical terminology for that, mm -hmm. but I don't teach people to diagnose people. You are, oh, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> right. Yeah. We are not trying to just go around and that's a real issue yeah. actually, because um, in part of my, uh, you know, as I said, I'm a life coach, Part of what I do is I listen to the other person describing their situation. And a lot of times the the person is not describing a narcissist. Sometimes I have to tell them, you're not with a narcissist. You just right. don't like the boundaries the other person is putting up. You don't like how they're responding. And they might be responding in an unhealthy way, but you're not right. dealing with a narcissist. So stop right. labeling this person because mm -hmm. your words are very powerful and right. you're creating you're, you're calling in that spirit. Narcissism is a, a first spirit. So, you know, as, as is everything uh, evil that we see, it originates in the spirit world. And so right. you're calling that to you when you are labeling something that it is not. So, um, uh, and that, and the opposite is also true, right? The opposite is also true. So if I uh, don't like what I'm seeing in my life, I'll start speaking out the opposite of what I see because I know I'm calling that stuff into me. Uh, my words are powerful, and 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 I, I try to uh, take note of that. You know, every time I open up my mouth. Um, yeah. So that's, that's one thing. And then on the other hand, so what I do teach people to do is recognize red flags, is to uh, have eyes wide open because what people do get into, especially if you are um, uh, uh, in a relationship for a long time, you have emotional. Uh, ties to the relationship, not to the person, but to the idea of the relationship. You know, mm -hmm. I love the idea of being married. So I'm just, you know, I'm just, going to, even though that marriage might be very, very toxic, there might be abuse and things happening. You, you are uh, tied. You have a soul tie. There's an emotional connection to the idea of the relationship, not actually how a healthy Good. marriage or a healthy friendship or whatever should work. Yeah. So eyes wide open, uh, being able to identify red flags. So for example, red flags of narcissism. I have so many teachings that go into this more in depth on my YouTube channel, but mm -hmm. just some some red flags that you can keep, um, you can keep an eye out for is one is that they really lack empathy. It's always about them. You might be having the worst day ever, and yet you know what they they didn't get something in the mail that they were hoping to get. You know something very like my. It, it's all about that now, and mm -hmm. and so you're gonna that there's a real lack of empathy, a real lack of sympathy. Um, they're very selfish and self-centered. 
to the point where you might be, again, celebrating somebody else, even a child's birthday, you'll find that the, the birthday is somehow now about them, you know, yeah. uh, you know, that it, everything will just be turned to, uh, to make them the center of whatever is happening. They have mm -hmm. to have the, the praise and the attention and the affection of other people and specifically people who are perceived to be in a place of power or prestige, mm -hmm. or they have some sort of social standing. So uh, this doesn't necessarily mean like the president or the CEO of the company. If they're a spiritual narcissist, this is uh, having the pastor notice you, having the lead, uh, the elders, you know, of the church or whatever, the, the leaders mm -hmm. of the church to notice you, to recognize you, and to do so publicly, to talk about other people to you, right. um, to, uh, they they are usually very suspicious to a very extreme degree of other people's intentions and uh, their motivations for why they're doing mm -hmm. something. And uh, again, this is because it's always about them. So no matter what you're doing, it's always like somehow about them. Uh, yeah. And so mm -hmm. those are kind of some of the red flags. Uh, again, there's so many, but but those right. are just some of the ideas. You as a person who's experiencing. Uh, this ab abuse, you're, again, you're going to feel very isolated. You're going to feel as though your feelings, your words, any kind of dream that you have is, is invalid, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's always on the, it's like the end of the list for, for the narcissist. It's always about their, what they want to say, what they want to talk about, what their dreams are, what their goals are. Yours are, are never even brought up. They're not ever addressed. And so you're going to feel, again, very isolated, even when you're in the home, the yeah. the problem is that a lot of people will. Is, I'm speaking now for a relationship, you know, situation. This can be true at work or you know with a friend or whatever. Um, but uh, the the problem is that there's a lot of issues going on in your body as well. So your brain is now getting used to this kind of bait and switch tactic that the narcissist will use, where you're discarded one moment, but now we're out in public, so now quickly. Uh, you know, act a certain way, things are great, things are happy. Well, this is causing serious brain damage. Uh, you're actually damaging your brain uh, physically. Your physical organ in your in your body is now releasing uh, tons of chemicals and hormones, making you addicted to this cycle. It's extremely addictive. And so, you know, a lot of people will say, why don't you just leave the narcissist? Well, this person is, first of all, addicted in their body. Uh, there, there's a physical component to what is happening. Second of all, as we said before, there's a soul tie. There is a very strong emotional uh, attachment to, not even to necessarily the narcissist, but to the idea of what right. that relationship right. to them yeah. held. And not to right. mention, as I said, this is first a spirit. There is an opening in the spirit wow. to allowing this to come in. And this can be generational. This can go back very, very far. This can be a very deep, uh, thing that was let in by some some type of sin that this person doesn't even know yeah. about and yeah. so um, there's a lot of there, there's so many levels to this and this is just a general uh, I'm just speaking in generalities right now now think about somebody who's in a very specific situation and all of the different things that could be going on there um, they've probably seen the narcissist manipulate lots of people even their church leadership against them so that this person again is trying to get help they probably have children they want they're seeking out they're doing the right things and yet no one is coming to help them they don't feel as though they have the support of anybody so try ima imagining if you're in that situation now imagine you don't even maybe you don't have a job because you stayed at home uh, mm -hmm. you you will feel like you have no resources to leave the situation so it's not helpful. If you have a friend who's with a narcissist, it's not helpful to say just leave the narcissist. You need to come in the situation with real concrete things. Like I've researched this. Here's some people who you can talk to who understand narcissism, who can understand exactly what you're going through. These are specific things that I researched and found that are available in this area that are available to you. I will take you. I will help you. You know, you really need to understand what it's like to be a friend in that situation for somebody who feels completely alone. That's that's what that would look like. So you can't come in and tell that person you do this. And not show them how to do it. They don't know how to do that. They are right. there. There's again brain damage happening to this person. So they're not thinking clearly. Uh, they they cannot reason uh, appropriately. And so it's not appropriate to say to somebody, just go ahead and leave.
Right. So Angel, let's talk about confronting narcissists because that's a whole other dynamic, right? Because I personally have had to deal with that and they're very defensive. They, they take it and they throw it your way and say, why are you being so sensitive? Or they don't want correction. So mm -hmm. how do you navigate that? Because they are very narcissistic. They're blind to their own faults. They don't realize the damage they're doing. They're not really wanting to even change because it's so part of who they are and they don't even realize what it is they're operating in. So what are some, what are some tips on that front? Yes. Um, well, first of all, I also want to say some narcissists do know that they're narcissistic and they know that they are getting exactly what they want. They're getting more power. They're getting more prestige. Mm -hmm. They're getting more social clout by being the way they are. So some people are very aware. And that's again, like this eyes wide open. It's, it's some people will continue to make the excuse for the abusive situation that they're in is saying the narcissist doesn't know. He doesn't know it. it if I give him enough love, he'll come to the realization it's not true. So, uh, so I would, I would, I would not speak that. I wouldn't, I, I personally just don't believe that. Um, if, if, because if somebody comes to me and tells me, Hey, this is really bothering me. This hurts me when you say this or when you do this, I, I will try to make sure that I am watching my words or my actions around that person. If, if that is truly the a relationship that I want to nurture and care about, where a narcissist will not do that. They don't care. They don't care. And and it, they, in fact, are getting energy by stepping on somebody else. They they mm -hmm. ride, They believe it rides higher. So that's one thing too. But um, yeah, you're right. Exactly. So narcissists don't want to be confronted because th this is really like poking a hole in the facade that they worked extremely hard to create this really nice, pretty picture that you're trying to come in and just like poke at and they don't like that. So, um, uh, for example, one one of the things it depends on the situation on as to how you should confront them. But uh, I have a video on my YouTube channel specifically called "Canned Responses to a Narcissist." When you know you're dealing with a narcissist, it's very important that you have already predetermined the way that you're going to handle the situation in terms of how you communicate to them, whether it's verbal or or uh, over email or electronic means, um, because they will always twist whatever it is that you say. And so you need to be very clear in your own heart, like these are my boundaries and this is what I'm going to say before stepping into it because they can draw you into a crazy conversation before you know it. You're saying stuff that you don't even know what you're saying. You don't even agree with that stuff, but they've drawn you into this insane conversation. So uh, uh, try to keep it very, uh, so in general now, when you're communicating with them, no emotion, do not, do not come in very angry or very upset mm. or whatever it is that you're feeling. No emotion very calmly, just simply state the, the facts and and your boundary. So, you know, nope, I'm going to stick to the court order for now. Or no, I'm not going to accept any changes to that. It's past the deadline. You don't mm. need to go, you state the boundary. You don't see the way they draw you in is by saying like, give me a reason why you don't want to accept what you're doing or why is it, you know, so then people start trying to defend themselves Then people start right. trying to explain themselves of like, uh, well, I, I, you know, I'm not going to accept that because past the bound, you know, it's past the deadline and we had talked about this on Monday and now they start giving this whole explanation where mm -hmm. you, this is exactly how they, they open the door to mm -hmm. twisting your words and to getting you to commit to stuff that you don't even want to commit to. And, uh, and this also helps you develop those boundaries. Again, this is important for relationships of all types. And you're going to run into narcissists, even if you, uh, even if you know all the red flags, the narcissist, you can't control who comes into, you know, your, your line of, of life. What you can control is how close they get, how much trust you give them, what you give up to the narcissist. And so, again, you need to know your boundaries, your own boundaries. This is healthy in all relationships, not just toxic ones. So, um, you know, knowing, again, it's very important before you go into a conversation with a narcissist that I know what I'm dealing with. Again, as eyes wide open and, you know, just simply going to state these things and I'm not getting drawn into, uh, you know, all types of other stuff. I'm just not going to engage. Wow. Yeah. And and that takes that takes somebody that is really confident and firm in their in their boundaries. So for me, I would think if you don't, if you're not a good boundaries person, <laughs> you're probably not set up 
to confront a narcissist at this point in time, you know, uh, maybe have somebody with you that can help you. But I do document. Excuse me? Oh, always document. When you're dealing with a narcissist of any kind, document your interactions because if this is in the workplace, if this is, you know, so you you there's another tactic that they use called gaslighting, which is, you know, no, that never happened. You're making it up. You're just imagining it. So journaling, you know, your interaction is really and and I personally, by the way, have experienced this my own self and my journals were one of the things that where I was looking back for months and saying like. No, this actually did happen. I wrote it down as soon as it happened. You know, I wrote it down and I wow. knew then that I wasn't imagining these things, that these things were real. These were really part of my history. These were my real experiences. And so documenting things will will help keep you out of that gaslighting fog that they try to, you know, put over you. Yeah. I to me, narcissists are artistic manipulators. Like they are so good at twisting your words and the situation to where they can actually paint a picture that's very believable or beautiful to some. And I've seen so many people literally questioning themselves. They're like, I must be crazy. Like, mm. oh my gosh, you know, yeah. um, to where the narcissist has convinced them. And I know it's a power thing and all that kind of stuff, but the narcissist has right. convinced them that I'm, you know, smarter than them. I'm better than you. You know, um, you're always confused. You're, you know, etc. And um, to where, like, I literally, it's like artistic manipulation. Because I'm like, you've you've mastered your art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, that's that's what I've seen. Um, I yeah. literally know um, an individual who is educated, have their degree, the whole nine yards, brilliant, um, spirit-filled individual, was married to a narcissist, and this individual was like, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm obviously stupid. I mean, you know, all this stuff, and I'm like, hold up, like, <laughs> what in the world? But they're able to manipulate in a way that you're not even realizing necessarily that you are being manipulated. That's right. And another thing is that narcissists usually, again, because they're after power uh, and control, they will target people who have a certain education level, a certain job uh, title. Uh, they are looking specifically for those types of people. So um, if you think I've climbed the social ladder, I'm at where I need to be. This is never going to happen to me. Think again, you're the prime target. They're coming for you. So again, this is why boundaries are so important, regardless of what's going on. Uh, no matter where you are in life, this is why you need to, and, and boundaries are always built up around your identity. So again, if you don't know who you are, it's easy for somebody to come in and manipulate you and tell you who you are, because that's okay. exactly what they're looking to do, you know? And, mm -hmm. and again, going back to the, to the very first time we ever saw a narcissist, uh, you know, did God really say, did he tell you that you right. you have everything or is there something better? You know, I think mm -hmm. I can give you something better. So knowing that. And, um, and so, yeah, you're exactly right. That, they will absolutely do that. And and furthermore, one of the questions that I'm asked a lot is, how do I get back at a narcissist? And um, and if you think that you are going to be able to out manipulate, out twist, <laughs> you know, this person has been doing it a long time. They have uh, yeah. help from a spirit, as I said. There, yeah. you will never be better than them uh, at that game. And so that is not the way you get back at them. Right. Yeah. Right. You love them with the opposite yeah. spirit. <laughs> that, um, cause you're talking about, you know, people, high powered people, <coughs> people of influence, leaders, et cetera. Um, but they're, you know, just like the enemy. I mean, the enemy's not going to waste his time. The enemy is not going to, he's going to target people with certain things that he knows are their weaknesses. You know, like he's not going to, you know, if you don't like chocolate, he's not going to try and tempt you with chocolate, you know, type of a thing. So, um, I know it's way oversimplified, but I, I just want to mention something quickly. Um, I don't think we mentioned yet. Um, coming from what Melissa said about how someone might think that they're stupid. 
that they got into such a relationship. Um, Angel, this is birthed from an experience you've walked through and you're a very smart person. And um, I think they target people who are very empathetic, people who really care about others. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just wanted to mention that like this is, you're speaking from experience, right Angel? Yeah, absolutely, exactly. And again, going back to um, I have several videos again on my YouTube channel. Just I, I want to I want to just throw that out there so that people are like, I want to know more about this. It's out there already. Um, so if you're if you, one of your giftings, if one of your talents that was put into you when you were created is being a feeler, somebody who is empathetic, somebody who is um, a, a helper. Um, but you don't understand how to use those gifts. Again, lack of boundaries, lack of identity. You don't actually understand the purpose behind those things. This makes it very easy for uh, for somebody who is looking for those weaknesses to prey on. You know, the enemy is prowling around like a lion looking for who he might devour. Uh, you're you're the prime one. <laughs> you are you are like you are lit up in the spirit, saying, "Come and you know, abuse me, use me, take advantage of me." I have no boundaries because I don't understand my gift, and I just will be available to give away my power. And that's really what it is. It really doesn't matter, uh, you know. Again, and especially if that is combined with something that the narcissist wants, they want to be mm -hmm. elevated to a certain position socially or financially or whatever they'll absolutely uh prey on that so for sure yeah that was where i was going was what <coughs> what and who are the people that that the narcissist you know targets it's not just powerful people um because not a lot of powerful people will fall for it it's the combination of if you are that empathetic, that servant heart person, that um, connector, high connector person, and you have power to give away. Yeah, and right. I think it's also yeah. I think it's also important to note that there's like so many different types of narcissists in in themselves. So right. you can have a cerebral narcissist. This is somebody who's very very intelligent, but who has um, it's not just somebody who's intelligent and has zero EQ. It's somebody who's very intelligent and wants to use that knowledge specifically to dominate other people. Um, so you have all types of different narcissists. You have narcissists who um, who are very passive, who would who would never uh, verbally assault you, but who will absolutely manipulate you so that you continue to do what they want. You, you'll typically find these are like the 50 year old people who are living in their mom's basement and the mom can't say no to that person and go get a job and get out of the house because that person has has drawn that the the supply you know the mom in this case into them so that they feel like they just can't get rid of the narcissist the narcissist can't live on their own so there's multiple ways that narcissists mm -hmm. come and what they're looking for is going to depend upon that as well so if mm -hmm. i if i just want to sit around all day all i really need is somebody who will feel sorry for me and who will not hold me accountable and who will allow me to just sit around all day. So if that's the type of narcissist I am, I'm going to look for a supply, you know, that is going to feed that to me. It depends on what the the narcissist wants as well. So uh, it's not just, this is why you can't control again, as I said before, who comes into your path in life, um, but you can control how far they get in your life. You know, if yeah. you accept them in, if you have a relationship with them and what's acceptable to you, that's always determined by you. And so if you're rooted in your identity, it doesn't matter what any other people are doing. It doesn't matter how many narcissists are all around you. It doesn't matter. Uh, how, all of that kind of stuff isn't going to affect you because you know who you are. And yeah. you also know how to defend yourself, how to protect yourself appropriately by your boundaries. And right. you just already determined in your heart, no, this is a this is a red line for me. You you don't meet the threshold of becoming a, a friend of mine, let alone a, a a very dear friend or a spouse or whatever. You just don't meet the criteria. You're right. not the best that heaven has to offer to me. I'll mm -hmm. wait for the best. And yeah. so again, it's tied yeah. to identity. Yeah. yeah, I think with narcissists too, it's hard. They don't like boundaries. They do right. not That's like right. when you start exercising your boundary. And I know personally, I've had to put some real harsh separation that no, you mm -hmm. will not cross this line 
and and you will not you will not and if that means that we have to separate ourselves from a couple of months then so be it because i have to look out for myself my family and make sure that that you aren't in this line of trajectory because it's not healthy so that's absolutely right and it is uh, you know, I have a whole course through my uh, through my five hundred one c three where I talk about exactly this, like how to how to how to determine what your boundaries should be because uh, everybody is different. First of all, we all are in different seasons of life, so the season of life that you're in should determine your boundaries, as should be your you know goal in six months, one year, five years, things like that. You have to have vision, and if you don't mm -hmm. have that, it's kind of like, well, then I want everybody out. And you'll have a lot of people who experience narcissistic abuse who are on that side of the spectrum. They want to build up walls and not boundaries. And I like to say, you know, right. walls keep everybody out. Boundaries tell people where the door is. You want people in your life who, who respect you, who knock on your door. You know, you don't want some people who just, if this was your physical house, you know, we are, we are the home of Holy Spirit. So if you can think about your physical house in terms of who you would want coming in and, and who you would want around your children and the, the people who would be affecting your atmosphere, if that's an easier right. way to kind of conceptualize what I'm talking about now, right. then, then think about it in those terms. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. People don't want, the narcissist will not want those boundaries put up again because it's all about them right. and mm -hmm. they're always going to be about them. And so, yes, you will have to think about the and uh, when you set up boundaries, it's important to think about the consequences of setting up those boundaries. If somebody doesn't accept your boundaries, what happens? You know what? And, and again, this is an individual basis because we're all in different seasons of life. We all have different callings on our life. We have different makeups of our life. Uh, you know, some people who are who are single and 19 years old are going to have different boundaries than someone who's, you know, 70 and, and has grandchildren. So it is, it depends on the season of life you're in and what you ultimately want for your life as well, what you're called to do. Um, people, different people are going to have different, um, different boundaries based on the call in their life anyway, regardless of, of narcissists being around them or not. And so uh, it's, all of that kind of stuff goes into constructing healthy boundaries for sure. Yeah, Good. I think one of the things we have to address with boundaries and, and sometimes when it's hard to set boundaries, I was just actually having this conversation um, right before this show, a similar conversation is um, when you're in, you know, a relationship or a situation that, you know, has whatever level of toxicity. I mean, there's different levels, right? Like we could drink a tablespoon of bleach. It's not going to kill us, but we drink a gallon of it. You know, there's different levels of toxicity. Um, but when we have a hard time setting a boundary in a toxic relationship, oftentimes, instead of looking at the toxic person, a lot of times we've got to look to ourselves also and say, okay, what need are they meeting in me that I'm having a hard time setting this boundary? You know, and you talked about like, the the mother that had the you know narcissistic 50 year old living in the living in the basement and as much as they might be draining them financially and emotionally and all this other kind of stuff oftentimes you have to look at the mother and go okay what need is getting met here by you you know and and i know oftentimes too people are like oh absolutely not and you just kind of get quiet because you're like it's not always true actually there's usually something that you're being fed even if it is just i so love being a mother and the thought of not having you know my son and or my daughter or whatever in my house with me terrifies me um but i just want to i just kind of want to throw that in there that so everybody's not just always pointing out the narcissist and they're so bad because if you're having right. a hard time setting boundaries with them you really have to ask mm -hmm. why it's not always about the narcissist right um but sometimes it's about you know um an unmet need within yeah. that that you've even allowed that person into your life 100 percent, and again you you're responsible for your life. I'm not responsible for your life. And, and that's 
manipulation, that's witchcraft, to try to come over and take responsibility and authority over somebody else's territory. Uh, so mm -hmm. that, yes, absolutely. You're always responsible for your own life and, and you're exactly right. Well, one of the things that, this is true in all facets of life, but you know, for sure when you're dealing with a narcissist, if you didn't learn the lesson, guarantee you you're gonna end up your next relationship narcissist. It's gonna be a narcissist because you didn't learn the lesson. You didn't learn how to set boundaries. You didn't learn how to take responsibility over your own life. Uh, unfortunately, I've worked with somebody who's been married eight times, all of them to a narcissist. And at that point, you have to start looking at yourself and saying, I'm attracting the spirit. I'm attracting the same spirit in a different body. Why am I doing that? And uh, absolutely, it has to come. And again, this is, uh, you know, Bill Johnson, I love this quote. He says, everybody has a Jesus shaped hole in their heart that they're looking to have filled. And unfortunately they fill it with other things, right? They fill it with people. They fill it with money, a job, whatever they, all the things. Um, and, and again, this speaks to identity. So if that hole in the middle is not filled with right. again, Jesus, because in, yeah. in him is found your identity. If it's not filled up, you're going to fill it with all of the other things. And then you're going to have a really hard time, you know, separating from those things because it's at the very, very, very center of who you are. You've, you've allowed somebody to come and take the throne that Jesus should be sitting on in your heart and occupy that place. And so, yeah, it will be very difficult for people to to dethrone that thing that they've made the king in, in their heart. The other thing to make sure to note is that there's a lot of other factors happening. It's not just you and the narcissist. You're going to have a bunch of codependent people get involved and also you know the narcissists have flying monkeys as as they are typically called the people who will go out and do their bidding uh, and you need to know how to set boundaries and if you don't yeah. know how to you're yeah. going to find yourself just swarmed by all of mm. these different uh, factors that that come along with the spirit of narcissism this is yeah. not just like narcissist it's the network of and it's the entire system of, of what is being used by the spirit. So, yeah. Uh, so yes, there's so many different factors like that coming into play for sure. Yeah. And I think too, we can think of, you know, the narcissist, they don't really have long lasting relationships is what I've seen because people, if they confront them, then they, they step back and they're like, oh, this isn't someone that I can control or manipulate. And so you don't see very long lasting relationships or genuine relationships. They're very surface level to take advantage of what they want from that individual. And then when they have what they want, then they're gone. Is that exactly you that, Angel? Yeah, that's exactly right. You'll find that the relationships are, uh, they're never, it's never like, I like you as for who you are. They always see you as a position of either supply, like energy that they're getting, or again, one of the things that they want. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's um, power or uh, better social standing, like we've spoken about. They, they view people as positions that yeah. can be occupied in their little like hierarchy of, of uh, people that they just kind of collect up. Uh, for for when they might need them and and that's absolutely how they view people they view people not as sovereign entities not as like you are your own uh, mm -hmm. person with your own purpose and that kind of stuff no it's like okay I see what I can get from you you're gonna go over here I see what I can get from you you're gonna go over here and they have this all very very organized see this is why you can't out manipulate them They've mm -hmm. thought now they're 20 steps ahead of you. If you think right. like, oh, I'm going to do this and then they're going to do this. Well, guess what? They already uh, That's already in their plan. They already thought yeah. about that. They're 20 steps yeah. ahead of you. You're never going to out, uh, outrun them, outmaneuver them out. You know, you can't win at the game that they're playing. It's and like so, a chess game. You know, they're moving their, their pieces around. Yeah, Thanks. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Angel, uh, right. You... Oh, I was just go ahead. Finish what you're saying. No, that's it. that's it. Oh, okay. I was just going to ask you, is it common to find narcissists in ministry positions? I absolutely think so because it gives you a lot of the stuff that you would be wanting if you were a narcissist. I've got immediate followers. I've got immediate, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever that, that kind of platform that we put uh, people in ministry on. We, we like put them at some higher level for whatever reason. Uh, you'll have 
um, a way to influence people to get them to do stuff that you want them to do or um, you can teach them your version of whatever doctrine it is that you want people to be in you know un underneath uh, yes absolutely so yeah. again um, uh, the the interview that I'm doing on Friday is so important because this pastor is really talking about seeing this, observing this in mm. in the way that people will creep up kind of through the congregation, like to become in these positions. And uh, and it's never about Jesus. It's always about mm. them. It's you'll you'll notice ministries that have the central focus of Jesus or the central focus on the person. Um, and that's really one of the ways to do that. And is it like, is this person able to be spoken to by Holy Spirit or are they just like on mm. their on their own journey, like blazing the trail of whatever it is that they want to build? Um, and uh, and, you know, there's all types of stories that like point to this in the Bible. Like I'm, I'm thinking about now. Um, when, when God, God is a, this is in the old Testament. I believe it was, um, when King Hezekiah was in power, he was trying to reconstruct the temple and they started building the foundation and then everybody quit and they would go, went and built their own houses. And God speaks to them and says, you, you're building your own houses. And guess what? You're, you, you planted a lot, but you gathered little, anything that you brought back to your house, I blew it all away. Why is this all happening? Because you've forsaken my house. You've not mm -hmm. built up my house. And mm -hmm. the same is still true now. Uh, you know, that, that's such a, a good reference to what is happening in the spirit. Like yeah. if you, you should be able to tell the fruit of everything, you know, Jesus said um, that he, he was told the true by the tree yeah. by its root. And you will know it by its fruit. And, um, and and so that's absolutely people need to be open to this, have their eyes open about who they're getting connected to. This is such a, a huge th boundaries apply to systems. Boundaries apply to institutions, to uh, structures, to physical structures. Uh, you should not be just connecting to it because it's down the road. You know, did God lead you to go to that church? Did God lead you to get connected to that ministry? You're opening your your doors up to a whole bunch of bad yeah. uh, influences and bad seeds that can be, yeah. you know, the enemy is coming while you're sleeping and he's putting out all of the tear seeds. And so, yeah. you know, yeah. this is what's happening. We we are having yeah. this awakening. It's a very encouraging, yeah. but people do need to be um, taught about this. Yeah. You know, I think that pastors, ministry leaders should be speaking about this kind of stuff yeah. to their of congregation because these people need to know about it not just about in church but when they go to their job and and mm -hmm. if they're in a, a relationship a marriage of, about this if they were raised by narcissists mm -hmm. they they will have ways of doing things that are not that are not okay that that need right. to be adjusted uh, they right. need some healing to happen so yeah. we have to have we have to have people yeah. more open to speaking about this yes well yeah. let's go there because churches i know ones that have narcissists you know, leaders or pastors, they're very controlling of their people. Like they won't let them really go anywhere else. And they'll say, you have to have permission if you're going to go to this other event, or you have to, if someone wants them to come speak or come do worship, you have to go through the pastor and they're kind of like the gatekeeper. So like they're very protective and controlling of what, and they use the God card, you know, well, we're just, we're just supposed to protect you and we don't want anything, you know, outside to come into our church but it's really manipulative and controlling. So yes, absolutely. Pastors, and that, you know, before, cause I know I, I don't, everybody, you know, out there listening to this conversation has already now labeled a million people, you know, and I think one thing is, that we've got to realize is there's a spirit of control. There is a spirit of manipulation that doesn't make somebody a narcissist, right? We have, Narcissists mm -hmm. will be controlling and manipulative, but not every controlling or manipulative person will be narcissist. Okay. Um, so let me throw that out there to everybody that's going to start, you know, looking at their pastor that has control issues. <laughs> which is a, a, probably another, we should probably have another discussion about that on another yeah. day. But um, it, it, extreme it's control hard. issues. Let's say if they have extreme control issues. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, what I think too, what you have to look, you know, at the whole picture. So um, those that are in strong leadership positions, especially in the church, that is like, to me, prime, prime position for a narcissist because 
as the church, we're always taught to serve. Yeah. Right. And so when, you know, if you, if you have a narcissist, let's just go ahead and say pastor, um, who demands service more so than just try to control or, you know, whatever. Cause I mean, there are pastors that, that have God complexes and think that they've got to protect and all this other kind of stuff more, you know, in ornately. But I think we can see them. that it's you, everybody has to serve me or my call or what I, my platform or what I believe, you know, this doctrine is, or, you know, um, was, is probably, Correct me, um, Angel, but I would say that's probably more of a flag than just the protection thing and not letting outside come in as much as everybody that's in here has to be about me. Yeah, so um, I absolutely love Bill Johnson from Bethel. I listen to everything he has. I've read every single one of his books. I love him. He he's talking about I, I was listening to his podcast one time about how he's talking about how he's building the vision for what he has for Bethel. And he told everybody who came in, you're going to build my vision. And once I know you can be trusted with my vision, I'll trust I'll trust whatever it is that comes out of you. So, again, I think that this is so why it's important that you have your identity. Bill Johnson is absolutely called to right. to build a movement to not just a church, uh, yeah. right? And so he he was operating in a mandate from the Lord, a mandate from heaven, which is much stronger than a calling, which is much stronger than a, a dream or or whatever. This was yeah. a, a, a true mandate. So again, this is why I think that having your identity is so necessary because if you don't, and, and that hole yeah. in your heart, that shape like Jesus isn't filled up, uh, you're not connected to Holy Spirit. You're gonna, you're operating from the woundings that you've experienced in your own life. You know, I had a pastor who just said that to me one time, and now you're a narcissist and and all that kind of. By the way, this is this is true stuff that's happening. We, you know, you can find all types of like hate pages for for Bethel and for all that kind of stuff, right? And so we need to be aware, like that this the op, the the thing that we're talking about is absolutely happening in the opposite way of like somebody just doesn't want to be under authority. Somebody just doesn't want to uh, serve somebody else's vision. And so now now they're, you know, of the devil. And this happened to Jesus too. You know, this happened to Jesus. He was uh, he was casting out the devil by the devil, right? And so um you know, I, again, I, I so stress um, identity. I so stress that because if you can't hear from God about where you're supposed to go or what you're supposed to be connected to, um, uh, you're you're always going to be frustrated and you're never going to be learning the stuff that you need, you specifically need for your life, for your mm -hmm. calling on your life. You're always going to be doing what you think everybody else is doing. Like, ah, oh, they're doing that. I'm going to follow them. I need that. Like you may or may not need that. You need to know that for your own self. And without that identity, you're always like feeding off of somebody else. Like, oh, they're doing that. They're doing that. And so you're 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 constantly like that. And so uh, where that that person may be doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing, but you're just like trying to follow whatever they're doing. Well, you're not a copy of anybody. Uh, so you need to know who you are, and you do your life and live your life in the in the manner that the Lord has called you to walk out you know, walk out, walk out your purpose, walk out your destiny. So, um, but I would say like, on the other hand, I think that there is a lot of guilt that, and, and kind of like, uh, uh, that's how I always sense it. If I, I feel, um, conviction that is different than shame or guilt. And, mm -hmm. and if you feel guilty, like, Oh, I can't say no to the pastor. I, I you know, he's going to do this or he'll say this to me. That's guilt. That is not of the Lord. Conviction will come in your spirit, not from your soul. And so that that guilt is originating in your soul. You need to know like that is that is of the devil. I need to break that. You know how you break it? You say no. You have a boundary. <laughs> you disconnect that and that right. tie that they have there. And so uh, I, I, you know, I, I think that um, it's difficult to just kind of put a label out there like this is always or this is never. I am. Yeah. It isn't. And I'll tell you something else that I know for a fact that a lot of the um, circumstances that I've had in my life, 
that that are not great circumstances have been orchestrated by the Lord for me to experience those things because I'm I'm called to to teach this. I'm called right. to instruct the people on how to overcome right. those things. But not right. everybody is. And right. and not everybody is. And so people should not just be doing like, well, Angel did that. That isn't <laughs> never. You know, in fact, like you're gonna have a real yeah. rough time with it if you try to do that stuff. So mm -hmm. just exactly. because somebody else is doing it doesn't mean that like trust that the Lord is taking care of that person right. and just worry yeah. about your own self. Things right. will start coming forward for you when you are focused on like, am I doing the right? Am I right with the Lord? You know, can I hear his voice? Am I, right. am I in any area of disobedience in my life? Is there an open door that I know about? Am I living right. in you know, known sin? That kind of stuff. You start taking care of your own spiritual yeah. backyard and right. this kind of stuff isn't going to weigh so heavily uh, on like the right thing, the wrong thing, or, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah. uh, conviction always originates in the spirit and guilt is, is coming from yeah. the soul. Well, I think that's a good segue angel to the vision board. So I know yeah. you have a way for, um, for people to, to go onto your website. So I'm going to share the link here. Why don't you talk a little bit about the vision board and the, as we're wrapping things up? Yeah, that would be great. So um, this vision board is something that's um, just a little segment of something that's a much bigger project that I'm working on right now. But um, when, when I, at the beginning of the, the conversation that we were having, I was talking about how important it is to be intentional in building your connections and building your vision, building your life. This cannot just be like, oh, that'll happen like when the Lord leads or when the Lord wants it to, it'll just come. Like, yes, there are, praise God, miracles like that, but it's usually because you've had the capacity to withstand what he wants to outpour. And so to do that, um, this vision board is based off of these six um, categories that the Lord gave to me. Uh, they are uh, time, health, spirituality, relationships, knowledge, and self-worth. And those are the six areas that all, all of the other things that you do should should branch off of. These are very intertwined as well. So this is not like, um, okay, I'm keeping track of like how I manage my time. That might be part of it, but really like how, how much time do you spend into uh, developing knowledge versus uh, developing your relationships? And is that the season mm -hmm. of life that you're in and that kind of thing? So this is all very intertwined. There's um, instructions in the, in the uh, PDF download that you can look at. And then the way that it's constructed is to be like a tree, like all of the branches ultimately find their uh, their source from the trunk, which goes down to the roots. And that's how all of these things should be. They, just remembering that this is all, uh, did the Lord put this on your heart? And is this for this season? And how are you actually constructing and making sure that you're managing what you've been given appropriately and in conjunction with the Lord? You know, you're never going to get better at time management if you think, oh, that'll just happen when God wants it to happen. Like if you're not uh, uh, diligent about saying like, no, I need to be on time. I need to do this kind of stuff. Or if you are, um, you know, you tell people I'm going to call you on such and such a day, but you don't. Those little things. Start taking responsibility for where you are and you're able to build upon that kind of stuff. So where you're mm -hmm. able to say, like, this is the type of friendship that I, I feel like I'm missing for this season in my life. And these specific characteristics of that friendship, that's what I'm going to pray in. That's what I'm going to start looking for when I'm out and about. But if you're if you haven't even managed the ones that you have, like you, how do you think that you're going to get this ideal relationship, you know, friendship? So. Um, so this vision board is really to to can be used both ways as a self assessment tool, kind of taking a look at where you are right now, like really being honest with yourself, as well as a building tool. So a connection uh, way to build these connections and help them all kind of flow in your life. This is so essential because, you know, without vision, the people perish. And and again, if you don't know what you're doing here it'll be like oh this person came into my life i'm supposed to get connected with them or you know that this this thing seems like a real good thing for me to put my hand to it'll prosper in jesus name mm -hmm. and lots of people are doing that and they're not called by the lord to start cultivating that ground or to build anything over there and they are just expecting heaven to bless it and so this is really uh, cultivating what you personally, you specifically, by the way, you can use this for your family. You can use this for your business. Yeah, so you can use this in a bunch of different areas, but uh, I've primarily made it for people to really use it as a self-assessment tool 
and then to start using it to build off of. I love that. So good. Awesome. So where besides besides going to this dream board, because um, it's on a bitly link, but where can people go to find you find out more? I know you have a YouTube channel. Um, I want to get those links up so it's easy for people um, as they're watching this uh, replay to just be able to click on the link. So where can they find all this good stuff? Sure, I can send you those links if you want after this. But um, okay. yeah, I have a I have my ministry page is on uh, Facebook, Ashes to Beauty Ministries. You can find me there. It's just my name on YouTube. It's my name on Instagram. I think it's my name as well on Twitter. Um, and then my ministry website is just ashes to beauty ministries.org. And uh, there's a connect form and all that kind of stuff that you can connect with me there as well. Ashes to beauty ministry. As I said, yeah. Yep. Ashes to beauty ministries.org. Okay. I'm getting it on here. So it's easy for everybody. Cause I know there's good stuff on there. Wow. Anyway. So if you could just do us one last favor as we close up today and just pray over everybody out there and um, anybody that's really feeling their heart tugged um, in this direction, they might, you know, be in a situation where they're really needing to set boundaries and, and just have that courage and that, that um, inner fortitude to start walking in that, that would be amazing. Yes, absolutely. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for this time. I just seal this time in the blood. I thank you that your Holy Spirit is going forth and touching the hearts of the people who are watching this, Lord, that your Holy Spirit is sending conviction where it's necessary, that your Holy Spirit is sending peace and joy and hope where it is necessary. I speak to the people who are watching this, who are finding themselves in a situation where they're wondering if there's hope or if there is a way to get out of this. And I just speak to you now that there is life for you. You are meant to live and to declare the goodness of the Lord. And I just speak to you right now that there is, uh, there are people who are praying for you. There are resources available to you. Mm -hmm. God, I thank you for the people who need uh, just an extra measure of your boldness. I pray uh, what Peter prayed in Acts, that your spirit of boldness would just rest upon them, that they would be able to go forth and to do the things that you have called them to do without the fear of man coming involved, Lord. I pray that you would also build up their identities. I, I pray that you would even give them dreams in the nighttime, that you would give them dreams of, of how you see them, Lord, uh, of the way that they are uh, were created in heaven, Jesus, that you would just come and speak to them. Yeah, you know the need, you know their longing, the desire of their heart, the thing that is missing from that Jesus-shaped hole in their heart, Lord. I ask that you would just come and fill it. I ask that you would just speak to them uh, individually, personally, Lord, so that they would know it is of you. God, I just thank you for this platform. I bless these women who are on here. I thank you for the hosts of this show today. God, I just pray extra measure of blessings and favor upon them today for being obedient to you. And we just close this in your mighty and powerful name, Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Thank wow. You. HB Nation, that was amazing. Share that this video. Amazing. You know, everybody's talking about narcissism, but we just need to have a better understanding be educated about it, go to her website, go to her YouTube channel, get that information. Um, you know, in an armed society up here is a great society to come against this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. arm yourself, educate yourself. Let's stop slapping sticky notes that say narcissist on everybody and mm -hmm. um, and bring health and wholeness to the entire body until mm -hmm. tomorrow. See you later. See ya. Bye. Mm -hmm.